Welcome back. We are in the book of Exodus chapter 17 and today verses 14 to 16. Let's see what happens with Amalek and I'll read it. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this in a book as a memorial and recite it to Joshua that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and named it, the Lord is my banner. And he said, the Lord has sworn the Lord will have war against Amalek from generation to generation. So, interesting piece here because Amalek, God's people prevailed against Amalek yesterday morning. Uh, and now we have this business about memorializing. And this is the first place in the Bible. It doesn't happen in Genesis. It doesn't happen in Exodus until now. Second book of the Bible. Uh, write something down. Hey, Moses, write this down. So, very interesting. The first time that there's writing actually uh, in the Bible. Another thing that's interesting here is this is both a prediction and a prophecy. God says he's going to wipe out Amalek from under the earth. It's going to be complete. There will be nothing left. All Amalek will be wiped out. But he's going to fight against Amalek from generation to generation. That sounds kind of cockeyed, doesn't it? How is it that he's going to wipe out Amalek utterly, completely, totally, and yet there will be war with Amalek generation to generation? Because after all, he says he will utterly blot out. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty final sounding thing, right? And let me just step back a notch here and tell you what I see. Amalek here represents, remember, God has delivered his people from oppression in Egypt. He's bringing them into the promised land. And Amalek just comes out of nowhere to fight, kill, maim, and destroy. And so I think in this, I mean, this literally happens. It's a literal historical event. It literally happened this way. Yes, yes, yes. But I think also there's sort of another layer here. There's a, there's a symbolically thing here. Amalek sort of stands for all those people who are in opposition to God, all those people who choose to be God's opponents. They choose to shake their fist in God's face and say, no, it's going to be this way. It, because actually all the resistance to God isn't in Egypt. It's not just, it's not even just, you know, in the world, so to speak. There's re religious, there's people with other religious beliefs that are resisting God. They're just not on God's team. They're in a false religion. Here is Amalek and they are resisting God's people, they're resisting God's will, and God says, I'm gonna, there be nothing left, I'm gonna utterly blot Amalek out. When it's all done, it'll be all over, there'd be nothing, there'd be nothing in the way of my people, nothing in the way of, uh, there'd be nothing supporting a self-servingness, it's all going to be unselfish love. So there's kind of a great controversy scope, the war between good and evil here. Amalek represents all the, in this situation, it's a literal historical situation, but on sort of a prophetic level or a symbolic level, this Amalek is representing all the opposition against God's people. And God's people are standing on God's side. Amalek's people are representing Satan in the opposition. And they will all be utterly, when it's all over, they will be utterly blotted. There will be nothing left those that are opposing unselfishness and those that are favoring only oppression, those will be gone. So here's sort of the great controversy, the battle between good and evil, so to speak, sort of all compressed into this little space, this little event here in the desert out there by Rephidim when Amalek attacks the people of God. Kind of an interesting piece. It, one more thing here too. Uh, I don't see, again, lots of prayer, lots of consulting God. I'm not saying they didn't do it, but in the text, it's not really there so much. And remember, there's times when we directly interface with God and get his counsel. And remember, he's also given us common sense. He's given us a certain amount of rationality, uh, some, some of us more than others. Uh, I hope I'm in the right group there. In a case of emergency, a lot of times God doesn't just leap in and, and tell us what to do. He's already told us what to do, you know, at the Red Sea. He said, what are you waiting for? Go forward. And here, when Amalek attacks, uh, they decide, let's get the troops. Let's go down and, you know, Joshua, gather them up and go. And so Moses seems to do it without lots of con divine consultation. So interesting pieces here. And maybe we don't have the whole, the whole thing just isn't put in the scripture. But I like to think that God also supports us when we take it an initiative, a Spirit-led, Holy Spirit-led initiative, and go His way. But we may not have to consult down to the very details all the time. Uh, we know the battle, the, with the outline of the great controversy battle between good and evil. And so, yeah, we must oppose evil. It's just, it's just basic. It's just the way it is. All right, see you tomorrow morning.